today by saying thank you to each one that's took the time out of your day to come and to be here for this family and especially I'd like to say thank you to the young people that has come out look around at all these young folks that are here today normally in a situation like this it's just us older ones but you see John's love for not only the old but for the young man did he love kids and how the kids couldn't help but love John. And I believe that's the reason there's so many people here today. Because John, if you couldn't love John Castor, you couldn't love nobody. What a wonderful, wonderful man. What an honor it is to say just a few words here today of comfort to the family. In the book of 2 Samuel in chapter number 3, it says, in verse 32 and they buried Abner in Hebron and the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner and all the people wept and the king said unto his servants know ye not that there is a prince and a great man fallen this day in Israel he described Abner as they stood there and they wept as a prince and a great man and we've come here today to pay our last respects to one of the greatest men, not only of this church and this community and of this family, but one of the greatest men I've ever known. One of, <laughs> when I think of John, I think first about his kindness. What a kind man he was. What a, what a kind man. How that he could... <laughs> He, he was just he was just given the kindness. When I got to be the pastor here at Amy's Creek, it had been 20 years ago now. I remember Robin and I has talked about it so many times. If you didn't get to go with us to Six Flags that year with John Castor, you missed it now, folks. We gathered up all these little mountain kids around here, and we headed out to the big city of Atlanta. And there was lots of us. We wasn't we wasn't comfortable heading off into Atlanta, but we went off down there to Six Flags, and oh, how that John had a bigger time than anybody there! What a great man! What a kind man! I can remember how he he just he. Now some folks might say John Castor wasn't a rich man. John Castor was one of the richest men I know when it comes to friends and loved ones. He'd dig down in the pockets of that polyester pants and he'd hand out tickets and he'd hand out money to them kids. I can see as he'd do his arms this way and 
get them just to come on in. What a time he was having. And then D would just stand there and look, and she'd just grin and shake her head. Oh, how that she loved John Castro. How that she loved John. I've heard folks talk about a match made in heaven. I believe John and Dee was a match made in heaven. And today they are a match in heaven. They're a match in heaven. If there's ever been two people that was made for each other, it was John and Dee. But she slipped on ahead of him here a while back. And he tarried on around because still they was work for him to do. And that great old big kind heart, what a blessing it's been to so many. As I viewed the pictures there at the funeral home, just they was a kid in every picture. Now they was one or two photographs of the brothers and the sisters and all, but by and large it was John and the kid and a great old big smile on his face. What a generous man, what a good man. Folks, now John set an example. You didn't have to worry about your kids being around John Castro. You didn't have to worry about a word slipping out that you wouldn't want your kids to repeat. You didn't have to worry about John doing something that you would think would be a bad reflection or a bad influence. Well, I've heard them speak about, I've heard Danny talk about when he was a kid, how that they'd get in with John and he'd take them places. I guess a lot of folks thought John was just a big kid, and sometimes I think he thought he was a, just a big kid, but he was a generous man, and he was a good man. He was a godly man. He was the only man I ever saw that could call catfish. He could walk up to the, he could walk up to the side of that catfish pond, and he could go, come on, babies, and you could see the water move. He could call. <laughs> now he could do it, folks. I've never, as, as the Bible says, know ye not that a prince and a great man is fallen. That's why so many of you are here today, and that's why our hearts is filled with so much sadness, and we're so broken, because we know, we know that there's a prince and a great man that's left. He left behind a testimony though. He was a godly man that knew Jesus Christ as his Savior. And oh how he wanted all of these little ones, all these younger ones. And if there be any of you older ones that's never been saved, he wanted y'all all to go to heaven with him. Robin made mention of it just a few days ago. How that Jennifer was the very first one that got saved when we come here to Amy Creek Church. I can still picture it in her mind as I saw her walking down the aisle from where they sat back near the back on the left-hand side, standing at the front. And I remember her testimony when she got up, and this ain't Jennifer's funeral, but I want to tell you what kind of daddy and mama she, that they've got. She said, I wanted what my daddy and mama and my brother had. She wanted salvation. She wanted Jesus. And I'm thankful for folks who take their kids to church that yes. they would want to be saved. John was a genuine man. Folks, John Castor was the same. It don't matter where you saw him. It didn't matter what company it was in. It didn't matter. The Bible says that, oh, ye not that a prince and a great man. Yes, John Castor was the same everywhere you saw. He was your friend everywhere you saw him. And then, in closing, he'll be greatly missed. You know, they were some of us might slip off into eternity, a day or two, and folks would just forget all about us. But as long as we live, we'll remember John Castor. As long as I've been gone from Amy Creek for down to 20 years, and still, he's so fresh in my mind. The things that he said, the kindness. Anytime I'd meet up with him, now, last time I went to his house, he had to send on my arm load of canned stuff with us. He had to send. He said, me and Jennifer been making jelly, and we doing this, and we doing that. How did, <laughs> I remember slipping up to the sliding glass door, and I, I, 
I remember. And there I laid John back in the recliner asleep, and one of Buddy's babies laying on him asleep. You talk about happy. one that he come in contact with you, he'll be greatly missed. But folks, I believe he's waiting just over on the other side. And in closing, I'd like to share with you what I believe God would have me to share with you. If you've never been saved, make preparations yes. for this day's coming to each one of us. We might not have, it breaks our heart that we only had John for 77 years. But we're not promised that 77 but we have today, if you've never been saved, make arrangements. We love you. We appreciate you. Mm, what a special, kind family. How good that they've been. How blessed that me and my family is to have got to be friends with John and Dee Casper. We love you. May the Lord bless you. say thank you to, to all those that's here today as brother Mike has already said I'd like to say thank you for all those who's had a part in this service today honoring John he was a great man before we go any further I'd like for us to go to the Lord in prayer we'll bow our heads your heavenly father God, how we thank you for this day. How we thank you, Lord, for... I know there's hearts that's here that's heavy this afternoon. But God, I want to thank you for the peace that we have this evening. While we've come to a place now where we're going to say bye for a little while to our loved ones. But God, we know that there's coming a day, as it's already been said, one glorious morning, you're coming back. And Father, as Paul said, those that's asleep will rise first, and we which remain will be called up in the air with them, ever so to be with you. And Lord, I thank you today for that promise that we have. God, I pray, Lord, that you would touch this family in a special way today. Father, I want to thank you for the kind words that Brother Mike has already said this evening. And Father, I pray, God, that you would help us for just a little while now. 
as we do what we need to do in Jesus' name. Amen. I looked on the card a minute ago, and it said that John was born February the 9th of 1943. And December the 31st, he went home to be with the Lord. John had a long life, amen. And from what we've been told and what we've heard, he had a good life. And I believe the reason that was was because of who he knew. Because he he had found the Lord in his life years and years ago. So this evening as we gather here, and as Brother Mike said, there is a multitude here, amen, praise God. And as we come this evening, we can come, even though our hearts might be heavy, we can come and can I say celebrate. Celebrate the life of John this afternoon. Celebrate the person who he was. Celebrate who it is that and what it is that he did. As, as Brother Mike said about the canned food, I, uh, from time to time, Brother John would give me a can of soup. And I'd wait till Lisa was gone and I would eat it. <laughs> hey man, I didn't put off the chair that you, Brother Mike. And the jellies that he would give us. But most of all, I'm thankful this evening for the kind heart that Brother John did have. Now, I'd like to say some 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 things this evening. If, if, if you'll just give me just a few minutes of your time this evening. I want to talk about the peace that we can have in a time of sorrow. You know, God can give us peace this afternoon. Peace that passes all understanding. And I want to talk this afternoon about a journey. Because that's what our life is today. Each and every one of us that are here today, our life's a journey this evening. It starts at a time and it ends at a time. We don't know when it's going to end. We don't know where it's going to end. But can I say this evening that it's going to end? And it's what we do with that time that is so important this afternoon. It's what we make of that time. It's what's so important this afternoon. And we know what John did with that time. We know what he did with his life. John knew that he, he was going through a journey in life and, and he chose. He chose the right path. Can I say this evening, there's a right path for us to, to be on this evening. We need to choose the path that God has laid out and put for us this evening. We know what Jesus tells us in John chapter 14 and verse 6 when he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And we know that there's no other way this afternoon. John knew that. John had heard that word as a young man. He had heard that, that message preached and, and he believed in his heart. And he accepted the Lord. He had faith. He had faith that passed all understanding. Can I say John had faith even in the, in the difficult times? John had faith in his God. I think about Abraham when God spoke to him and he told him to, to leave his, his homeland. And Abraham left looking for a city whose maker was God. I think about John looking for that city and on that journey as he looked and looked and he looked for that city Thursday night he found the entrance. And it's no surprise that Jesus was there, amen? Jesus was there just like He said He would be there. And John met the Lord there at the entrance of that city. And all I can say this afternoon is I hope, I hope in my heart this evening that everyone here has found the entrance to that city. 
I hope everyone has found the way this evening and knows who Jesus is. There's not a lot that I can say about John this evening, Jennifer and John, family, because John's done said it all. He's preached his funeral. He's lived his life. He's lived it in front of his family and his friends and his church. And I, I don't know if anyone could ever say an unkind word about the John Kastner that I knew. I don't think anyone could ever say anything harsh about the John Kastner that I knew. I enjoyed the times that we was able to get together. But John's faith was strong. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God in Romans 10, 17. And John had heard that word and he trusted it. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. John knows sometimes, just like we're living in times right now, it's uncertain. We're facing things right now, this, this virus. And that's what took John home, was this virus that we're experiencing now. And we're, we're living in uncertain times. But you know what John would have said? He said, you got to have faith. you got to believe. you got to trust in the Lord. Regardless of what's happened, you have to put your faith in God. And friend, can I say this evening? Sometimes we can't see what tomorrow holds. But oh, we know who holds tomorrow, don't we? And that's what we trust in this evening. It's not what we can see, but it's who we know. It's who we trust in. Sometimes our life is long on earth, as John's was. And sometimes our life is shortened on earth as some are. But I never will forget what I heard a pastor say one time when he was talking about the length of life and the journey of life. And it's went well with my soul and could I say I hope it goes well with your soul this evening. But he said this, some people finish up their work on earth sooner than other people. And as I look back and I see those loved ones that we've said goodbye to, I look at their life and what they've done in their life and what they've accomplished in their life. And only I wish that I could accomplish as much as they've accomplished. And hope, Brother Mike, before my journey's over, that I'm able to. You see, heaven's not for everyone. You say, what are you saying, preacher? Heaven's not for the good people. Heaven's not for the bad people. It's not for the rich. It's not for the poor. It's not for the church people. Heaven's for the children of God. And for those who's trusted in Him. And has took that walk with Him. That's what John looked forward to in this journey. That he'd put his trust in God. And he knew heaven was going to be his home. And that's what he did. He searched for that home that's been prepared for us. Heaven is for the saved. Paul said, Paul said this in, in closing. He, he, he talks about this. He says, to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Oh, if I could just get a glimpse of what John said. If I could just get a glimpse. I think about Paul. When Paul had an out-of-body experience. And Paul says this, I know not whether I was in the body or in the spirit. But he said this one thing I know. Paul said, I know what I saw. And this one thing I know. You see, Paul was ready to go home. Paul was ready to... to uh, end it and get out of here but the Lord said Paul I want you to go back he said your job's not finished and Paul says this he says to live is Christ and to die is gain in Philippians 121 Paul said if we're going to live we ought to live like Christ 
We ought to be Christ-like. People ought to see something in us. Our light ought to shine out in this world. In this day and time that we live in, young people and old people, people ought to see Jesus in our life today. They saw Jesus in John's life. And we ought to see Jesus in our life. John was able to do all this by trusting in the Lord. He felt the power of God because he knew God was near him. Brother, can I say this evening, there's nothing like feeling the power of God. There's nothing like knowing that Jesus is near you. I want Him to be close to me this evening. Brother Mike, when I stand to preach, I want to know that the Holy Spirit is close to me. I want to know that I'm walking with the Lord. You see, Enoch walked with God. And the Bible says in the book of Genesis, He was and He was not, for God took Him. You see, they came that evening time there. They came that day of that journey for Enoch there, that he was walking close to the Lord. And the Lord looked over to Enoch and he said to him, he said, Enoch, he said, we're a little closer to my home this evening than yours. Just come on and go with me. Thursday night, heaven got a little close to John. And the Lord began to whisper, in his ear. And I believe the Lord said, John, he said, your journey is fixing to be over. He said, heaven is near. Why don't you just come and go with me? You see, he, he felt the power of God near him. And not, on, not, on, not only that, he, he knew God's protection in this walk of life. Friend, if you don't know Jesus today, you don't know what it is to have His protection. I'm glad this evening as we sit under this umbrella here. We can look at this umbrella and we can think in our minds that's the way it is with our Lord this evening. We're under His protection this afternoon. Not only that, we have His promises. His promises that He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He stick us closer than a brother. I want to say to the family this evening as you go home, this ain't the end. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning of what, we, what we're here for. We got a whole lot more to look forward to this evening. Heaven's our home. We shouldn't get our sights set on this world. But we ought to be looking for that city. That city whose maker is God. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, God, how I thank you this afternoon. Lord, we love this family. And we pray that you would touch them in a special way. Father, I would pray for all those that's here under the sound of our voice this evening. If they don't know this Jesus that John knew, Lord, would you begin to speak to their hearts, whether it be here or on the way home from here, Lord. God, would you speak to their hearts and begin to have that conversation that how heaven needs to be their home this evening, how they need to find that way as Jesus says, I'm that way. Father, I pray, God, that you would touch this family. Father, I pray that you would help them in a great way, Lord. Bless each person that's come this way this evening to honor the life of John Caston. We give you the praise and the glory and look forward to the day that we see you face to face ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. There's food in a fellowship hall for the family and for those who who want to uh, stay.
as far as I know, this is the service. God bless y'all for being here this afternoon.